In the introduction to this playlist, we looked at a couple of things, but one of the things we looked at was how the lifespans of the patriarchs have this kind of interesting mathematical formula going on and how that ultimately connects back to divine name number values. And what I mean by that is the gematria for the divine name. So as we can see here, Yahweh, the mathematical breakdown is 26. Here you have a hypothetical form of the name, which is 17. You could also get there by a different to 17 by a different method of gematria for Yahweh. But either way, the point is 26 and 17 are deeply associated with the divine name. And these numbers are going to pop up all over the place. But today I wanted to finally loop back around to some of this stuff because I had brought up a little bit of this in the introduction, but there's a couple of like other related things to this that I want to finish off some observations. So in the past, you know, commentators had noticed this interesting mathematical thing going on between the patriarchs. So Abraham's lifespan is 175 years can be arrived at at five squared times seven. Now where things get interesting is Isaac, his son, his age, his lifespan can be arrived at at six squared times five. And then his son, Jacob, seven squared times three. So notice that we have this quadratic thing going on five squared, six squared, seven squared. And then the coefficient, what it's multiplying is itself decreasing seven, five, three. And the additional observation is that Joseph's lifespan is the sum of the quadratics. So the five squared from Abraham, the six squared from Isaac, the seven squared from Jacob is ultimately going to be Joseph's lifespan. Now commentators, again, in the past had noticed this before, but what they failed to appreciate or notice was its association with the divine name number. 17 is the control. 17 is what these numbers are all pointing back to. So instead of multiplying, if we add the numbers in each case of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we get 17. Now, of course, Joseph's age wasn't done in the same way because his was the sum of the quadratics. So he drops off the list there. But we're going to loop back to this set of numbers, the quadratic coefficient, because there's one more number that could have been put in here, but it's not. So, but again, we'll loop back to that point. And the other thing we noted was the fact that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, their total lifespan was 612, which is 36 times 17. And of course, Joseph is interesting because in many ways, he is kind of the end of the patriarch, uh, the, the age of the classical patriarchs, because that's the end of Genesis. We move into Exodus. And then from that point on, it's like the nation is treated more as a group as opposed to the individual patriarch that it's kind of following that line through. But anyway, we did also note that if you substituted Sarah's lifespan, she lived 17 more years than Joseph. If we put her age into that group, we get 37 times 17 is the total lifespan of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sarah. Now, why Sarah? Why does she get to be inserted in. I think on one hand, it's kind of obvious that she's ultimately the matriarch, right? She's the wife of Abraham that was promised Isaac was supposed to come through that line. So on one hand, there's that. On the other hand, um, it could be that there's a gematria thing going on. In the case of Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, here I have the number breakdown, but just look at this. The total value of the name Isaac is eight times 26. His son, Jacob, the value of his name is seven times 26. The value of his son, Joseph, is six times 26. So again, we have that descending number value thing going on, but they're all related to the number 26. But in the case of Sarah, at this point, her name is Sarai. The value of her name is 30 times 17. So her name is associated also with a divine name number value. So maybe that's why she's a bit special as well. But from here, I wanted to pick up back with Labashain's book, because here he's interacting with uh, Dwayne Christensen, who was one of the few scholars that was actually aware of this kind of stuff and would interact with it. And he felt that the pattern was incomplete because it was missing the formula eight times eight times one, eight squared times one. So who's the fourth person in the sequence with 64 years? So we need 64 somewhere in here. And he identified that person as Israel. Now, you can get to Israel one of two ways. So Labashain goes by way of Gematria. So the Gematria for Israel is 64. So he thinks that that is ultimately a reference to Israel. In this case, the number does not represent the lifespan of Israel, which is the same as that of Jacob, 
because they're the same person, but the presence of the alternative name of Jacob. So again, he thinks it's um, Gematria for the name. But further down, Christensen was interacting with uh, Rashi, the rabbi, and he gets into this deep, complicated thing about the biography of Jacob. And this is just kind of the conclusion here at the end. Jacob left Laban when he was 97 years old and spent two years en route back to Canaan. At 99, he wrestled with the angel. His name was changed to Israel. The total of the years Jacob lived with his father, Isaac, and his uncle Laban was 63 plus 20 equals 83 years. And since he died at 147, he lived 64 years in another home. So that could be also where the 64 plays in. But either way, with either of these observations, if the 64 is indeed part of that equation and it's associated with Israel, we then plug that back in. Because this is the last of these that would work to get back to 17. But if we plug these numbers in, we have Israel now here, 8 plus 8 plus 1. And if we bring Joseph back in, into this, where we have Abraham's 5 plus 5, Isaac 6 plus 6, Jacob 7 plus 7, and then Israel 8 plus 8, we get 52, which is 26 times 2. It's the divine name Yahweh twice. So that, that's just, that would be a heck of a coincidence if it is. Now, Labashain is going to kind of close this out here. He says, in this way, the lives of the ancestors of the Israelites appear to be governed by the divine name numbers 17 and 26, obviously to express numerically the idea that God was with them in accordance with his promise to them. There is additional evidence to substantiate this. First, right at the beginning of the Joseph story in Genesis 37 2, it is said that Joseph was 17 years old. Second, in Genesis 47 28, the author used exactly 17 words to tell that Jacob lived in Egypt for 17 years and died at the age of 147. By the way, if you substitute, or if you subtract rather, the 17 from the 147, the years he was in Egypt, we have 130 years, which is the rest of uh, Jacob's lifespan. That's interesting because 130 is five times 26. So we have the other divine name number value. But back to Labashain, finally, in the passage dealing with the death of Abraham in Genesis 25, 7 through 11, we count exactly 68 or four times 17 words. So once again, I wanted to return back to that. And again, I'm leaving many things off the table because Otherwise, this could get overwhelming with all of the potential number things going on. But I just don't think that that's a coincidence. I think you can press this stuff and find coincidences. But so far, all of this stuff is just superficial. It just is what it is. I'm not necessarily doing weird things where I'm, I feel like pulling things that just have nothing to do with what's there in the text. This is the superficial things going on. We just have the names. We have their lifespans. We have the value of their names. And over and over and over again, we're going to get 17, 26. These numbers are popping out all over the place. So I, I don't think it's coincidental, but that's all for this time. And we will pick up again with more in the future.